Balancing a chemical equation involves determining the lowest whole number ratio of substances in a chemical equation so that the amounts of particular atoms are the same on both sides of the equation. It's essentially an application of the conservation of mass. I'll go through a number of examples. First, elemental phosphorus reacts with elemental chlorine to form a molecule PCL3. Our job is to determine the lowest whole number ratio in which this reaction is carried out. In other words, what is the recipe card for this reaction? Before we balance, we see that on the left side there are four phosphorus atoms and two chlorine atoms. On the right, one phosphorus and three chlorines. The equation is not balanced because we do not have equal amounts of these particular atoms on each side of the chemical equation. It's our job to select whole numbers and place those whole numbers in front of these formulas so we do end up with equal amounts of atoms on both sides of the chemical equation. There is no one particular way to balance a chemical equation or there is no one magic formula or procedure to go about balancing a chemical equation. It's more about discovering how you feel comfortable thinking about balancing these chemical equations. Although there are some generalizations you can make with particular kinds of reactions. Here is the balanced chemical reaction between phosphorus and chlorine to make PCL3. Six chlorines four PCL3 molecules and one phosphorus. When six and four are placed in front of Cl2 and PCL3 and a one remains in front of P4, we see that there are equal amounts of phosphorus on both sides of the equation and equal amounts of chlorine on both sides of the equation. I began by selecting four to put in front of PCL3 to balance out the phosphoruses. Then I realized that there were 12 chlorines on the right. Therefore, I needed to put a 6 in front of the Cl2 in order to get 12 chlorine atoms on the left side of the equation. What is essentially accomplished after we balance a chemical equation is that we figured out the recipe card and the simplest proportions for a, that particular reaction. This animation for the reaction between phosphorus and chlorine will help you visualize at the molecular level how this particular chemical reaction occurs. In this reaction, a single molecule of phosphorus, P4, reacts with six molecules of Cl2, chlorine, to produce four molecules of phosphorus trichloride. Here is a reaction between a hydrocarbon, C3H8, and oxygen to produce CO2 and water. In general, if there is a substance in its elemental form, balance that particular atom last. The reactants include three carbons, eight hydrogens, and two oxygens. The products include one carbon, two hydrogens, and three oxygens. The balanced chemical equation is one C3H8, five oxygens, three CO2s and four waters. I first put a 3 in front of the CO2, followed by a 4 in front of the H2O. And finally, I balance the oxygens on the left side of the equation by putting a 5 in front of the O2. In the combustion of propane, a single propane molecule reacts with five molecules of O2 to produce three molecules of carbon dioxide and four molecules of water. 
Here is another example of a chemical reaction where a hydrocarbon, C5H10 in this case, reacts with oxygen to produce CO2 and water. Again, we have a substance in its elemental form, oxygen, and oxygen will be balanced last. Before the equation is balanced, there are five carbons on the left, ten hydrogens, two oxygens. On the right, one carbon, two hydrogens, and three oxygens. My initial effort to balance this equation was to put a five in front of the CO2 to balance the carbons, followed by a five in front of the water to balance the hydrogens. The problem that I saw was that there was an odd number of oxygens on the right side. The way to get around that, given the way that I began to balance this equation, is to put 15 halves in front of the oxygen, or the O2. Now mathematically, that works out perfect. We cannot leave the chemical equation balanced in this way. Therefore, we need a whole number in front of all of the formulas. To solve this dilemma of a fraction in front of a formula is to multiply the entire chemical equation by the denominator of that fraction, in this case 2. After multiplying the entire equation by 2, the final balanced equation is 2CH5H10, 15 O2s, 10 CO2s, and 10 waters. Therefore, there are 10 carbons on the left side of the equation, 20 hydrogens, 30 oxygens, and on the right side, 10 carbons, 20 hydrogens, and 30 oxygens. Here is an example of a reaction where all of the substances are ionic compounds. In many of the reactions that we'll encounter where the substances are ionic compounds, the formulas of the polyatomic ions will remain unchanged from reactants to products. It is easier to count the polyatomic ions rather than counting the individual atoms that make up the polyatomic ion. Here, silver chloride reacts with sodium sulfate to form silver sulfate and sodium chloride. If we count the polyatomic ion sulfate rather than counting the individual atoms of sulfur and oxygen, the unbalanced reaction looks like this, where there's one silver, one chloride, two sodiums, and one sulfate on the left side of the reaction, and two silvers, one chloride, one sodium, and one sulfate on the right side. Because there is one sulfate on each side of the equation, I first worked with silver and put a 2 in front of silver chloride on the left side of the equation. Then I realized I needed two more sodiums on the right side and put a 2 in front of the sodium chloride on the right side. When doing that, it did not disturb the sulfate and it balanced the equation. Here we have a mixture of covalent and ionic compounds. Do note that the phosphate polyatomic ion remains unchanged. If you recognize this reaction as an acid-base reaction, it will help the balancing process. In the kinds of acid-base reactions we will encounter in this course, water is always formed. There is one water molecule formed for every hydroxide polyatomic ion, and one water molecule formed for every hydrogen ion in the acid. H3PO4, the acid, has three hydrogen ions. Therefore, we need three hydroxides, 
and three waters in order for this to be balanced.